Hello Epidemic 2020. I'm a man of my word. Uh, I saw he had a video, you know, five questions, and I I like uh, answering those. I, I don't think atheists mind answering questions. It's the most believers don't seem to like to answer questions because how how can you ask questions and have faith? I I can see the problem. <laughs> uh, but he sent me a PM and he told me he can leave text responses for now. He's real busy, but he'd be happy to do a video response someday if he can. He's a little overloaded with a lot of traffic on his channel. I I respect that. Uh, but I figure as a sort of a token of faith, um, I'm going to respond to his five questions and just trust him to someday when he has the time to do a nifty follow-up video to my lame-ass five questions video. Question one. What kind of evidence would it take for me to believe in God? Well, I, I usually answer with the if God un undid the uh, confounding of languages, and that's one of my favorite answers. I mean, if I woke up one morning and I found out that everybody in the world could understand what I'm saying, everybody could understand each other, who else could have done it but God? Because we know that the storybook says that he's the one who thought it was a good idea to confound everybody's languages uh, because of the Tower of Babel. And uh, according to Josephus, because uh, Nimrod was thumbing his nose at God saying, I'm going to build a tower so sturdy the flood won't mess with it, and I don't believe you're not going to flood us again. You should read Josephus the Antiquities. You'd find it interesting. Yeah, the Tower of Babel wasn't really to reach heaven, according to him. It was to be above the next flood waters, because he didn't trust God to not flood the earth again, like he said. I thought that was interesting. Uh, yeah, if that curse was undone, I would be... I think I would uh, be very interested. I'd be praying all the time. I'd be wanting a response from this guy, because I would know. Wait, everybody in the world speaks the same language. But I'd also be happy with any kind of evidence. I mean, not the evidence like uh, the name of, you know, uh, Hezekiah written on some Assyrian tablet. Uh, that would prove the existence of Hezekiah, not necessarily God. So, I mean, it would have to be something. Two, is there anything that you can do to convince me that God exists? Uh, all right, I'll tell you what. How about a prayer request? The first question that I answered could you use your faith, which I know you have, pray that God can unconfound our languages, even if he only did it for a day. Although, why you'd want to go back to the old way, I don't know. Sounds like uh, some kid with a couple praying mantises in a jar shaking it up so he can watch them fight. I mean, people are killing each other because they don't understand each other. And they have been for a long time, so, I mean, wonderful idea, you know, confounding the languages. If if Jesus is right, and your prayers could actually move a mountain, even if they were just the consistent, the mass of a mustard seed, that you could actually move a mountain or do some other miraculous thing, you could pray for him to undo this, at least briefly. Because I think, I think a lot of atheists would come rushing to God if everybody spoke the same language all of a sudden. Prayer request. Three, if I realized that God existed, would I want to have a relationship with him? Hell yeah. I, uh, I didn't become an atheist overnight. I, I did a lot of praying. I, I read a lot of holy books. And as a young adult, I went to quite a few churches uh, and even looked into Hinduism and Buddhism, Islam. Uh, I even had a stress test. You know, with holding those, you know, couple of cans, uh, I just got turned off right away when I realized it would cost an arm and a leg to get well with the Scientologists. Uh, I'm afraid that would have made me sick. So, I've been looking, uh, but I'm 50. You know, back when I was a young guy, I was I looked all the time. I'm not against uh, God being real. I wish He was. Yeah, I'd want to have a relationship with him. I 
I used to pray all the time. Have I ever met a true Christian? Sorry to boil down that question, but I think that's what you really mean. Not really. I've met some good people that were Christians. I've met a lot of fantastic people that were Muslims and you name it. Um, they were, if someone was a good, a good person, it was often in spite of their religion, not because of it. They already were good people. I'm a good person. No, I met a lot of uh, phonies, actually. Um, and I was encouraged to be phony. Which leads me to question five. Has a lack of a true Christian, or presence of them, had an impact on my atheism? Well, I don't think a lack would have had an Im impact on it. It probably would have made me a Christian. No, I, I saw a lot of phoniness, a lot of hypocrisy, a lot of meanness and division. And, I mean, turn on the news, you know, um, the message is so muddled, muddled uh, that everybody's killing everybody. I mean, we've got like more than almost 40,000 denominations of Christianity. Even Islam is divided. That's why they can blow up each other's mosques and kill each other, you know, because they racial and, and theological differences. Um, I was encouraged to be phony when I was a kid. Not so as not to embarrass the family. I wasn't ready to get saved, and I was forced to pretend that I had been. And it fucked with me for a long time as a kid. It really messed me up. Because I believed there was a God. I was sure of it as a kid. I could feel him watching me. It was Jesus I wasn't so sure about. And I was forced to go up too soon. Because younger kids than me were getting saved in front of everybody. And I had to go up and do it just to shut my parents up and my grandparents because my grandfather was one of the ministers in that church and it was, and my dad was, his parents had just converted to Mormonism and they were, so my mom's side of the family, whose church we went to, uh, they needed a lot of convincing that my dad wasn't a secret Mormon and trying to make us Mormons. And the fact that questions, I was asking questions was basically evidence that, uh, it must have been that Mormon gene or something. Yeah, because of religion, I wasn't even really allowed to know my dad's side of the family. Because of their Mormonism. I've met a lot of nice Mormons, too. I kind of like Mormons. I just think they... I've read their book. I think um, it's pretty silly. I'm going to have to do a video on it sometime. Probably a whole bunch. You know. Anyhow. Um, you know, I want to say that Sable Chicken... Uh, responded to a video of mine and she said or he said I don't know what's sable chicken uh, God hardened your heart because that is what you wanted I didn't want that and um, thanks for the judgment peace